I spent four or five years trading the wrong way, learning every possible way to lose money. And if you've watched the podcast before, you've heard me talk about it. Where the only thing that was left was everything I had not tried. And then when I tried them, I made money. This is the How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast, brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com, where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Hey there, traders. Welcome back to today's How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast. Today, we have a special lesson for you. I'm putting it here on the podcast because I really believe that this is going to provide you massive, massive value. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And hey, listen, if this podcast was useful to you at all, I really highly suggest that you go check out the full trading course at AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com. Markets are people. People are predictable. Outlier can show you how to track market fear and greed with artificial intelligence on over 1,300 of the largest market cap names. Visit outlier.com to learn more. That's O-V-T-L-Y-R.com. They have a free pilot program for the rest of 2021 that you can get access to right now at O-V-T-L-Y-R.com. That's O-V-T-L-Y-R.com. Hey, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time we give you more tools, tips, and tricks to help you trade faster and trade smarter every single week. Hey there, traders. Welcome back to today's How to Trade Stocks Options podcast. Today, we're going to be covering more of the trading habits in our trading habits series from the book, 39 uh, of the World's Most Powerful Stock Market Rules. Uh, this was written by my friend Steve Burns, and uh, you know I, I actually did get express written permission from him to go through these. And if you found this useful, be sure to go pick up your own copy of Trading Habits, 39 of the World's Most Powerful Stock Market Rules over on Kindle. It only costs you like a dollar or you know, a couple or whatever it is. Definitely worth the read. So let's get into it. We've already covered uh, the first eight. Today we're going to start on number nine. And... Let's make sure I'm on the right page here. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're looking at number nine. The larger the market gaps, the greater the odds of continuation and a trend. So recently the SPY has been gapping a lot and I figured that since it was, let's go have a, a chat about it. So I'm gonna turn off all of my indicators here and then I'm gonna remove all annotations. Oh, I, I missed one, give me one second here. So what you'll see basically is a series of gaps. And I'll be one to say, I am not going to fight anything that's gapping one way or another. I talked about this on my Benzinga show the other day. It took us 32 days to make this trade, uh, to make, make this move happen on the left-hand side. It took us 12 days to make the move happen on the right-hand side. Are we setting up for a double top? Are we setting up for uh, head and shoulders? Only time will tell. I'm not predicting, but I am stating is that you can see all the gaps on this side of the page, whereas on this side of the page, it's a pretty normal looking move. So going back to this, Linda Raschke, she is a market wizard featured in the new Market Wizards book by Jack Schwager. We've had Jack on the program before. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so. And then um, go check out the Jack Schwager interview. Just an amazing guy. And so cool that he got to talk to these people. Price gaps on a chart generally trend indicators in the direction of the gap. The direction of the gap in this case had been up, right? We did have some gap downs, as you can see. Let me remove everything. We had some gap downs and continue down, but then we had gap ups and continued moves up. Sometimes gaps are so powerful they don't retrace. There are few things as bullish as a gap up or as bearish as a gap down. This is a strong signal and is not to be ignored. The odds aren't good to bet against the direction. We talk about this all the time on the program. Having the wherewithal, the ability to follow a trend. Don't try and catch the top. Don't try and catch the bottom. Don't, don't put yourself in the way of a falling knife. 
The point is to be part of the move rather than trying to fight the move. Let's move on to number nine. I'm sorry, number 10. Actually, I really like this one. This one was pretty impactful to me. The last hour often tells the truth about how strong a trend truly is. Quote, smart money shows their hand in the last hour, continuing to mark positions in their favor. As long as a market is having consecutive strong closes, look for an uptrend to continue. The uptrend is most likely to end when there is a morning rally first, followed by a week close. That's also from Linda Rashke, Market Wizard. I don't know how many books I've read. So for 2021, uh, it's it's October now. I'm on my uh, 99th book, about to start my 100. So I hit my goal of reading 100 books in the year. Every single trading book, I don't, I don't know of one that contradicted this, but every single trading book, when they reference this, they said uh, a few things, right? A bear market, starts out strong and ends weak, right? So the week, the weekly prices should start strong on Monday, end week on Friday. The daily prices should start strong on the opening and close weaker. That's for a uh, bearish market. Now flip it the other way, right? In a bull market, prices should close at the top of their range. Um, that's on the weekly, that's on the daily, so that's basically what it's trying to tell you is here that the smart money, the big institutions, they wait to make their moves at the end of the day. The first hour of trading is oftentimes amateur hour, while the closing hour is the lie detector. Same thing on the day, same thing on the week. You want to see a strong move throughout the week versus a, a weak move throughout the week. In my experience, traders will be better served by getting into the habit of taking profits in the morning, so selling at selling to the amateurs, and making entry decisions buying along with the uh, big hedge funds, money managers, based on the last 30 minutes of the trading day. This is how I trade. You know, people ask me, how do you do 10-minute trading? Well, one of the key principles is you don't trade all day. You... Well, for me personally, I like to get all of my scanners and everything set up in the last uh, hour. And then the last 30 minutes, that's when I go ex execute. That's when I make sure all my scanners are lined up. And when I say, okay, I'm ready to buy. I'm ready to sell. I'm ready to get in. I'm ready to get out. I'm removing all the intraday volatility. I only care what's happening in the last hour to half hour of the day, which is exactly when all the smart money's making their moves. And before we go on, think of how many times you've been excited. You've bought early in the morning and by the end of the day, it's had a reversal. Or you could just wait until the end of the day and then participate with the way that it's going. And then finally, end of day trading is the primary method used by Nicholas Darvis, who wrote the book, uh, how, to how, how I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market, which I read twice this year because it's so good. Ed Sakota, Market Wizard, and Tom Basso, Who's going to be on the podcast really soon? Be sure to subscribe for that. He's also a market wizard and uh, actually super, super nice guy. So just had to uh, a chance to you know chat with him the other day. Looking forward to having Tom on the podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm collecting as many market wizards as I can right now. So I'm, I'm really excited. Be sure to subscribe for that. So just to recap this, the last hour often tells the truth about how strong a trend truly is. Next, number 11. Above the 200 day, it's where bulls create uptrends. Bad things happen below the 200-day. Downtrends, distributions, bear markets, crashes, and bankruptcies. And if you have watched this podcast or listened to this podcast at any point in time, you've listened to me talk about how important the 200-day is. And especially when I'm working with Benzinga, doing that show over there, and then reposting it on our, our podcast here, when I see someone, you know, say, I want to look at uh, XYZ stock. Let's back test the XYZ stock. And the first thing I see is that it's well below its 200 day. The first question I ask is, why are you trading this? It's below its 200 day. Unless you're selling it short, there's no reason to be buying this. Even Money Mitch, right? Uh, he and I were talking one day about um, Square on, uh, on one of the shows I was on. And he was like, oh, yeah, I bought this today. I said, why are you buying this? It's $50 below its 200 day. Just find something else to trade. The ultimate line in the sand that separates a long-term uptrend from a long-term downtrend, a bull market from a bear market, 
is the 200 day simple moving average. In fact, Steve, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, one of my videos, it, it says how to beat the market, right? And it, Steve had done some back tests. I, I, obviously I've learned a lot from Steve Burns. Um, he had done back tests and found that if you traded one day a month, the last day of the month, and if the market was above the 200 day or if the market was bel below the 200 day to make your buy and sell decision, you would have outperformed the market like immensely, right? A really short little episode. If you haven't already found that, um, it's on the YouTube channel. It's it's one of the most uh, downloaded uh, episodes we have. But yeah, it's, it's just that simple, right? I want to participate in a trend when it's going up when I buy it. I don't want to participate in a trend when it's going down. And a 200 day, if you have no other, and if you if you don't even believe in charts, which the people I learned to trade from initially were that way, which I definitely don't recommend that now, have one line on your chart. That's it. And just trade with that line. For a market to drop 20% into a bear market or meltdown or a crash, it will typically first fall through its 200 day moving average. This is math. Let's turn on the 200 day on this chart here. So as of this moment, SPY is trading at 454. For the SPY to go down 20%, it would go down to, hang on, I have to go even further down, down, down. I still have to go further down. All right, for it to reach a 20% decline or a bear market, it would need to go to 361. That's 92 points away on the SPY. So basically 1,000 SPX points. And see this guy right there? That's the 200 day. At 418. For a market to drop 20% into a bear market or meltdown or crash, it'll typically first fall through its 200 day. It's just math. Now let's talk about the Corona, right? When, when it crashed around then. And we're gonna talk about this in a little bit too. There's your 200 day. It went down 10% to reach the 200 day. And then it continued going down, right? I think from top to bottom, it was down like 35%. Yeah, 3562, 35.62. And then it took, how long did it take? It went down February 27th through the 200 day and came back up on May 27th. So for three months, could have avoided all of this. I mean, even if that was your only signal above and below the 200 day, it just makes life really, really easy. So yeah, the 200 day is where bulls create uptrends. Bad things happen below the 200 day. And finally, the last of the trading habits for today, it is much easier to watch a few than many by Jesse Livermore, one of the greatest stock traders ever uh chronicled in uh what is that called reminiscence of a stock operator by Ed, Ed, edmund lefevre which i have also read this year the best way to develop a strong edge in trading is to study test trade that that's key here try things out and master a specific thing it is hard to be an expert in a specific market setup, chart pattern, trading system, or stock. If you only traded SPY, you would be an expert in SPY and you would understand how SPY worked. If you only traded Apple, same thing. You would become the expert in that and you would have mastered it. But part of what he's saying too is that you have to study it, you have to test it, you have to trade it, and you have to master it. I spent four or five years trading the wrong way, learning every possible way to lose money. And if you've watched the podcast before, you've heard me talk about it. 
where the only thing that was left was everything I had not tried. And then when I tried them, I made money. But the problem was that the, the, the gurus that I listened to initially, I don't think they ever made money. I really don't think that they did. But to me, they were geniuses because they had a platform like we're talking on right now. And that's kind of scary, right? And that's why I feel like it's my duty to talk about these kind of things because I do have a platform because we do have millions of downloads at this point. I want to share everything I've learned along the way so you don't make these same mistakes and hopefully don't spend as much money studying and trying and testing and trading the way that I did. But once I figured that out, it's game over. And now I do exceptionally well. And that's because I studied, I tested and traded. And I mastered a specific trading style that works really well for me. And I talk about it all the time. I basically show you everything I do on a weekly basis. It's hard to be an expert in a specific market setup, chart pattern, trading system, or stock. You need to develop a robust system for trading price action across multiple markets. That was one of the keys I wanted to talk about here. Get in the habit of trading a specific winning price action system <coughs> so that your trading becomes a simple search for the right signals. How many times have I talked about this, right? A robust system like strategy tester. You've, you know what I'm doing if you've watched this before over and under the 10 day exponential moving average. What does that show us? A 38% return, paint the trades on the chart. Look at that. That's most of my system right there. But it's finding these stocks and then not getting sucked into something like Wells Fargo, which, hey, it may look really great, but cumulatively, it has a negative expectancy on this strategy. Now you can play with your different strategies and you can find a strategy that works for you. And maybe it's MACD crossovers. Maybe it's the 200 day. Maybe it's something like that. But this is my strategy. This is what I became an expert at. And I know how it works. And I watch it. And I know it. Get in the habit of trading a specific winning price action system. The strategy doesn't work on Wells Fargo. It's not a winning system. So therefore, I wouldn't trade Wells Fargo. But I would find one of his friends, maybe like Citibank. Maybe like um, SYF, I think. Synchrony Financial. 78% return. But you know, that's just me. I like to find things that are proven historically to work. It's not saying that every trade will work. But over the history of the trades, yeah, it seems to work really well. So listen, I hope you found this helpful. I'm so glad to be able to talk about these. I'm so glad to be able to talk to you because this is my passion and I hope it's your passion too. And when I wake up, I think about trading. When I go to bed, I think about trading and it's all consuming. And it's because it's my passion. Your passion may not align to that and that's okay. Your passion may be mot motorcycles. Your passion may be, uh, you know, bull riding live here in Texas, so got to talk about that kind of stuff. Your passion may be making the world's greatest cowboy boots. But whatever your passion is, I hope that you become an expert at it. And whenever you're looking to trade, just come follow along with us. So listen, I hope you found this helpful. Smash the like button, as they say, if you found these tips useful. It shares it with more people and lets YouTube know that you value this kind of content and that I really value your time. Thank you so much for tuning into today's How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enable notifications. That way you never miss any of the tools, tips, and tricks we upload every single week to help you trade faster and trade smarter. I'll see you in the next episode.
Okay, so what'd you think? That was pretty incredible, right? Now, if you like that, that's only a taste, only a sample of what you're gonna find in the full AI stock trading system. And I really highly encourage you to go and check this out. Obviously, you are interested in learning and how to trade, and that's why you're listening to this podcast. Now, I'm going to take and download my entire trading system that I use day in and day out onto you. <laughs> and the only way I'm going to be able to do that is over at the AIStockTradingSystem.com. You're going to get phase one, two, and three, several bonuses. And on top of that, I'm going to walk you through over a dozen trades that I put on inside of my account, holding your hand and showing you exactly how I got in, how I got out, how I use the artificial intelligence data, and how this could work inside of your own trading portfolio on a daily basis. So make sure you head on over to AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com to learn more and to get started and to download my decade plus worth of trading experience into your hands so you can start using the AI Stock Trading System today, the five-step system to take the guesswork out of trading. Hey, if you like this video, let me know by leaving me a like below and then subscribe and share it with somebody you think could use it as well. Be sure to comment below with your biggest takeaway from this episode and any suggestions you have for future episodes. And finally, make sure you watch these other videos to help you trade faster and trade smarter, and I'll see you on the next episode.